Hope you're all well. Okay, so today's lesson is all about bowling, um, and it's a form of bowling we use in cricket. Uh, cricket is just one of your sports for this term. Um, bowling is a really tricky thing to master, um, so we're going to break it down, make it as simple as we possibly can for you, and give you an opportunity to go away and practice. Uh, because it's a tricky thing to master, it's something you need to practice an awful lot. Uh, so don't worry if the results aren't too good at the beginning, but keep practice, practice, practice. Come back to me if you have any problems, and we'll sort them out. But hopefully I'm going to be able to talk you through it now. Now some of you have done some bowling with me last year. So I like to think about bowling as a jigsaw puzzle. But more about that in a moment. I just want to talk to you about key points with bowling to start with. So there are a number of these. Okay. The first key point is my head is looking at my target all the time. And it stays nice and still. Okay. As still as I possibly can keep it looking at my target all the time. Otherwise, I will lose my accuracy, my balance, everything else. So my head, still as possible, looking at the target is key point number one. Key point number two, bowling is a side-on action. I'm always side-on through my action when I bowl and I complete my delivery. Key point number three is making sure I'm nice and balanced. Again, if I'm wobbling around at any point, that will lose my accuracy. Key point number four, bowling has to be with a straight arm. Okay. At any point, if I bend my arm when I'm bowling, that is not a bowl anymore. It's not a legal delivery. It becomes a throw. Okay. A throw is an illegal delivery and will add points to the other team. And whatever happens with it, it will not count. So if you get a wicket, but it's a throw, not a bowl, it will not count. It will give score, uh, points to the opposition rather than taking a wicket, which is what you're trying to do. Okay. So those are our key points. Now, to talk about the jigsaw puzzle. I like to break it down into seven separate pieces. Okay, so we'll talk you through those pieces, and I'm probably going to repeat myself a few times over and over again here. So, jigsaw piece number one is bunny ears, or victory sign, or whatever you want to do with your fingers here. And you can see on the ball here, I've got some writing. I'm going to use that to help me out. I'm going to place my fingers either side of that. If I turn my hand over now, it's gripped between my third finger and my thumb. My palm is clear it's clear okay if I grip the ball in the palm of my hand there it's very difficult to release correctly and control it so I understand my hands are bigger than yours but and it's easier for me but you need to be using your fingers as much as possible to control that ball and grip that ball so jigsaw piece uh, number one the grip jigsaw piece number two is our start position okay now in this we're not going to use any run up we're talking about our bowling action, and we're not talking about running into our bowling action. That comes a bit later. But our bowling action is basically our start position here. Okay, so jigsaw piece number two is your start position. And if you take a look at my body position here, my chest is towards you, but I am sideways. My target is in this direction. Okay, the ball is just underneath my chin. Okay. So if I glance down without moving my head too much, just glance down with my eyes, I can see these four knuckles on my fingers here, on the back of my hand. That is key. If my arm is back here, I'm now in a throwing position, and nothing will happen correctly from there. So the ball needs to be underneath your chin, with the four knuckles you can see just by glancing down without having to turn my head. Okay, just in here. My feet are about shoulder width apart, so I'm nice and balanced. My front leg, my foot's turned out slightly pointed towards my target. My back leg is at 90 degrees towards you, so I'm nice and balanced and really stable. My head, looking at the target, as we said. My front arm, at this point, is bent. Okay, that will change. That will end up pointing at the target as well. But it's bent here to help me balance as well. Now I can either look this side of my arm, or bit in between my arm and my shoulder here, whatever is comfortable for you. Okay, so position uh, jigsaw piece number one, the grip, bunny ears. Jigsaw piece number two is our start position or gather position. You might hear me mention that at a later date. Okay, gather position. Remembering this is the key thing: being sideways on, being able to see these knuckles here. So piece number three. We're moving on to piece number three. Now piece number three is important because this is when my arm straightens. Okay, so piece number three is I'm going to push the ball towards my target. So away from my chin, but towards the target, but I can still see those four knuckles without having to move my head too much. Okay, so 
So jigsaw piece number one, running ears. Number two, gather or start position. Number three, ball towards the target. Once I've pushed the ball towards the target, you can see my arm straighten. My bowling arm has now straightened. From this point onwards, it does not bend anymore until after I've released the ball. Okay, so jigsaw piece number one, two, gather position. Three, ball towards the target. Jigsaw piece number four is now windmill. So my arm starts to rotate in a big circular motion. When I get to about four o'clock, two things happen. My front arm straightens and points towards the target. My back arm, my hand actually turns so the ball goes from pointing away from me towards pointing towards the sky. Okay, that's jigsaw piece number four and that easily moves into jigsaw piece number five which is a seesaw. So front arm down, back arm up. Okay, I'm going to stop there and just recap again slightly. Jigsaw piece number one, grip. Jigsaw piece number two, gather position or start position. Jigsaw piece number three, ball towards the target. Jigsaw piece number four, start to rotate my arm in my windmill. When I get to four o'clock, Turn my wrist to the ball towards the sky, straighten my front arm, jigsaw piece number five, seesaw. This leads me into jigsaw piece number six. Now, the ball is now at its highest point. I like to call that 12 o'clock. If you would imagine I was a clock, what time would it be there? It would be 12 o'clock. So at 12 o'clock is when I release the ball. I release it at one, I release it at 11. The ball won't do what I want it to do. It needs to be at 12 o'clock. So, I'm not going to release the ball for the moment, just so you know, but I will show, I'll make it really clear when I do. Jigsaw piece number one, grip. Jigsaw piece number two, gather position or start position. Number three, ball towards the target. Number four, my windmill starts. Turn my wrist. Number five, my seesaw. Number six, release point. Highest point there. Okay, final part, which is the one that people tend to forget the most. It's called the follow through. Now this is important the follow through. Although you've already let go of the ball, all momentum that you've gathered and accuracy you've gathered, you will lose if you don't complete number seven and the follow through. Okay, so I'll try and show you what it is and pick out a few key points you can help with. So again, I'm not gonna release the ball. One, grip. Two, gather or start position. Three, ball towards the target. Four, windmill starts, turning the ball towards the sky, straightening my front arm into five, seesaw, six release point, and at the, after the release point, my foot steps over and I turn, and my back ends up pointing towards you, and my fingers both end up pointing behind me. So just to show you again, grip, gather, ball towards the target, windmill, seesaw, release point, follow through and you see both hands were pointing back this way my back ended up pointing towards you my chest ended up pointing towards the fence just simply there. okay if you break those pieces of the jigsaw puzzle down and build them slowly you will be able to complete your action don't try and bowl it too fast we're more worried about the action the movement and we can move on to our accuracy and our pace and everything else at a later date. Okay, so I'm just going to try and bowl a few. I will try and do it as slowly as possible to help you see, but I'm going to try and bowl a few. Okay, I'm going to bowl against the wall for this instance. It'll be sideways on here. Grip. There we go. Luckily, it comes straight back to me. I know I've bowled it straight. One more. Sideways on. And it's come straight back to me again. So, key points. Head looked at the target all the time. I was sideways on. Yes, I rotated, I ended up pointing the other way, but I still ended up sideways on. I was nice and balanced. The ball was gripped in my hands, and my release point was at 12 o'clock. Those are your keys. Well, then your pieces of your jigsaw puzzle, bunny ears, gather or start position key to check that will not work that will end up being a throw underneath your chin here or by your badge on your shirt if you have one three ball towards the target straight arm does not bend from that point onwards 
for windmill. Rotate the arm. Gets to four o'clock. Ball goes towards the sky. Front arm straightens. Five seesaw. Six release point. Seven step over. As I said at the beginning, it takes lots and lots of practice to get this nice and accurate. Go away. Give it a go. Good luck.